fifth seed. Matthew Strand is the fourth seed and Carrie is the sixth seed. So, so Matthew Wolf will, will be on the play. Which honestly is like a pretty big deal, but not that big of a deal. Rhino's yeah. like likes being on the play, but it's not that big of a deal because you're not a Days deck. So it's like whatever. Yeah. In fact, having the extra card can sometimes be very beneficial. Um, so it's not Rhino's is a deck where you obviously like to win the die roll, but you know, it's not it's not like Delver where you're like very happy to win the die roll. Our hero, Matt Strand, is is mulling to six, it looks like. Our or yours? The people's hero. I see. Okay. We don't like Carrie's rhino tokens. His but, son made them. They're, that's that's so wholesome. That's like peak family values. The villain kept seven. There is no justice. It's fine. Yeah. It's rhinos. Rhinos is just. It just does what it does, man. It just does what it does. It comes in. It makes some rhinos. It wins the game and it goes home. This is a hard day's work. Not easy work. It does a good hard day's work every game. Plays a fair game of magic. Isn't trying to do some weird like here's a doomsday, here's edge of autumn, street wraith, cycle, consider Thoss is Oracle that I win the game. No, it just makes some rhinos and hits you in the face. It's like a beautiful thing. You sound like a doomsday hater. I'm not okay. a doomsday hater. I'm actually a doomsday fan. Okay. I do enjoy a good doomsday pile. Matt Cap six. Matt Cap six. Are like we gonna see a ley line of the void? Pre game actions. Crazy. Are there any pre game actions? Not given his pattern to look at my hand, figure out what to play look. Vault of Whispers, Thoughtseize. Really good start. There are seldom better starts in the game of Magic Gathering than Turn 1 Thoughtseize. Turn 1 Thoughtseize. All right, let's look at the hand. Simeon Spirit Guide, Elvish Spirit Guide, Double Violent Outburst, Misty Rainforest, Fire and Ice. Ooh, and this is kind of a perfect hand, right? Yeah, but if you take one of the Spirit Guides, it's kind of a disaster. Yeah. Um, unless we can draw another spirit guide or another land, so this hand is definitely a snap keep, but you definitely don't want to be thought seized on it. You kind of are priced into taking one of the spirit guides, which is probably one of the least value like cards to take off of thought seize in general. Like, you'd much rather see a singleton cascader and take that, um, because it's a lot easier to draw out of a mana screw than it is a cascader screw. Just by sheer number of how many Cascaders you have and how many lands you have. Yeah. Like you'd rather not be playing the Mana Denial game against against a deck like Rhinos. Like you'd much rather play the Don't Get Your Rhinos game. Taking all the Spirit Guide. Correct choice? Because it, yeah, it pitches, it pitches to for both endurance. of them. No, it pitches for both of the Cascaders. Oh, that's true. Although, to be honest, we're still one land away anyway. So it doesn't really matter because it doesn't actually change the outcome of how the texture of the hand works. Ooh. Duress. A little sad. We can't take the... Uh... Yeah. Oh. oh. Wait, Why? Well, I would have probably just suspended the rhinos there, honestly. Do we have surveillance? I didn't think we did. I believe we do. We have two. Oh, so maybe he's just... Yeah, he's trying to surveil. That makes sense. Ooh, this is... A little bit tough here. I'm gonna try and work through the the rhinos. Yeah, taking violent outburst, I think, is correct. It's kind of you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because it doesn't actually matter because one of the rhinos is already in hand anyway. Another duress. Oh, I would have definitely taken. Takes fire. I would have definitely taken the uh, the other violent outburst. Because you can kind of handle one set of rhinos, but the second one is basically unlosable. But mm -hmm. I would have probably personally taken the other violent outburst there. But fire and ice isn't bad too, because that could just be the cantrip that he's looking for to actually cast the rest of his stuff. But again, um, I think it's not like in objectively incorrect to do that. I think it's like it's fine. I, I would have personally definitely taken the other violent outburst though. Yeah, I mean Matt's not playing a deck that really plays at instant speed. 
Fire Ice may not be as good at like actually disrupting him. Yeah. Here's a hedge maze. This does fix our colors, kind of, because now we have access to all three, albeit it's off the back of an exiled Simeon Spirit Guide. Um, but, you know, pretty good stuff. Surveil 1, let's see what we get. Uh, I'm guessing anything that's not a land goes to the graveyard. Anything that's yeah, not a land. Okay. There is the Scalding Tarn. Here comes the Safari Agent bringing with her the Rhinos. Charlotte Station is so much better than the Dying Outburst because specifically it gives you a faster clock. Granted, I don't think it truly matters in this spot uh, because I think you have both anyway. But yes, technically this is correct because it speeds up the clock significantly. Here is the Safari agent bringing with her the Botswana special. No one knows what you're talking about. Look, dude, it's a safari. It's a safari guy bringing some rhinos. Stop trying to make I'm good. safari agent happen. It's, but it's, it's never so gonna happen. Rhinos is now called the Botswana Special, and Shardless Sage is now Safari Agent. Do you know how hard I've worked to try and get my favorite deck name changed? What did you want to name change? What to what? Tempo Doomsday to like no bar, no bad card Doomsday. Well, isn't it NBC Doomsday already a thing? No. I, I have made this a name of thing. Uh, well, the way Wonder Pro was talking about it, it was like you did make it a thing, but it was like a yeah. meme. It was not a meme. <laughs> I'm so mad at him. I hope Max is here so you know how mad I am. Anyway, dome you for 10. Wasteland your Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth. Go. Not sure. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, oh, so not sure what... Uh... Yeah. I don't think we have an ensnaring bridge main here. You anymore. could have potentially went for a damnation there. Because uh, if you have Beseech, you can go like Chrome Mox Beseech with that much mana. Um, but, you know, it's that would be very specific and also wouldn't be great. It is game one going into game two now. So right now, Rhinos is up 1-0. Uh, right. Mono Black Helm had to mull down to five, had an opening of Thought Seas into Double Duress. Uh, but Carrie's hand was pretty stacked, all things considered. Went for the uh, basically just had a pretty stacked hand that even three hand disruption spells couldn't beat. Um, but also in general, I think this is pretty favored for rhinos, but I do think overall this was piloted pretty well. I actually think I would, uh, I think it was objectively correct what Carrie did, which was go for the surveil land instead of just cascade instead of suspending rhinos because suspending rhinos is so much slower than just getting rhinos the next turn you'd rather maximize your chances of getting rhinos next turn which i personally think that was a really good play i'd be curious to know why matt did duress the fire and ice instead of the second violent outburst um because i believe if you're not going to go for the violent outburst you should have duressed away the thought sees uh of the shake the Guide and then violent art, art, yeah. Actually, maybe there wasn't a good way to do. It. I still would have taken the violent outburst, but it's one thoughtsies and two duresses. Yeah, so you could only take one creature, and on the thoughtsies we took one a of the guide. spirit guides. Yeah, it was a uh, kind of awkward. Yeah, I think Carrie just kind of had. If I could sculpt a, a really good hand against three hand disruption yeah, spells, maybe it. the. And hide your land on top with the, yeah. What's inter What's funny too is if Carrie was on the play, he'd have turn one rhinos with that hand, which is pretty good. Okay, so uh, Max... going into game two, Matt is on the play again. Um, looking at the sideboard, the thing is, single target removal matches up so poorly against rhinos. But you're kind of priced into using them because otherwise you just lose the game. Bridge of Cause of Doom is kind of like a, a trap because it's so easy for them to get rid of it with three Brazen Borrower and two Force Negations. Um, and the other really funny thing is with, with this version of Rhinos, you could just build a really big creature and then just fling it with Minsk and Boo. Because he's got the one... I've definitely won games through a bridge just by flinging a Minsk and Boo that I just kept plussing on. Like a like a Rhino token. Um, and that is like a, actually a pretty viable way of getting around a bridge. Granted, we are only on the single Minsk and Boo, so that's not like hyper-viable, nor do I think it will come to that. But it is, it is a possibility, nonetheless. Yeah, so... 
That's full sideboard, one in staring bridge, two fatal push, helm of obedience, liquid metal coating, mycosynth lattice, three opposition agent, three plague engineer, two shoulder it's edict, the one the one ring. Looks kind of rough here. Not a lot of things I want to be bringing in. It, yeah, I mean, do you want to even bring the bridge in? It's like I think probably you're, better than some of your cards. You're kind of priced into it, I think. Uh, you're definitely keeping Damnation. You definitely board out all your Bowmasters. The card does pretty much nothing in this matchup. Um, definitely board out the Bowmasters. So if we board out four Bowmasters, uh, and we board out maybe the Nether Void. Nether Void's so good if it gets down, but if it's it gets so down, hard to get down. It's, it's four mana, and you're playing against a deck that's going to have a ten power, mm -hmm. if not more. Um by like turn three and if that comes down turn three you're winning the game but also how many spells also if they come down turn three you're winning the game because <laughs> at least with nether void right you can actually because of force of vigor it's actually pretty easy for you to play around it hmm. like yeah just pitch a spell pay three sure carry sideboard two blood moons two brotherhoods in two collector oofs one ember coal Two Force of Vigors, four Ley Light of the Void, one Magus of the Moon, one Mystical Dispute. I do wonder if it's correct to bring in um, the Collector. Oof, I don't think so. I don't think it's correct. I think mm -hmm. we're just faster, but I think it, it's an interesting question for sure. If you bring in Collector Oof, are you cutting all your Crashing Footballs? <sighs> That's a great question. I usually like to keep one or two in. Uh, but I realize that's not good because you really want consistency in your spells. That's why Comet isn't very good, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't actually know if you're supposed to bring it in. I, it's some. It's like a question to ask for sure. The specifically Matt's iteration of Mono Black Helm is much more all in on the helm. There aren't like griefs and trolls to do beatdowns with. So the argument for Collector Oof is significantly stronger. Uh, the problem is it also like it's pretty easy for them to get an out to it and then just ignore it and win the game. Looks like Matt has started here with a swamp, a ley line, turn zero, swamp thoughtsies. You know they say Island Ponder Go. What about Swamp Thoughtsies Go? Is that the is that the Swamp version of Island Ponder Go? Definitely. Right. Three lands, Wasteland, Tropical Island, Misty Rainforest. Cards available to take in hand are Force of Vigor, Force of Negation, Force of Vigor, of Fire and Ice. I believe are the four cards. I believe that's double Force of Vigor. Yeah, this hand is a. Uh... I'm okay if he thought sees me because I don't really have too much going on in anyway. If you take the Force of Vigor, you turn off Force of Vigor. It's probably the first like thing that pops out to me. If you take the Fire and Ice, you get rid of the Force of Negation. I would probably just take the Fire and Ice here and really keep them up, keep them off uh, any ability to interact with you outside of like on the stack or with like Force of Vigor. And by that, I mean basically it makes if you have a Dolphy Voidwalker or a Bone Master, you can start getting beats in. Um, because if you take Force of Vigor, it's like fine, but you don't really, they don't really care about Force of Vigor right now because they're not interested in removing your stuff until you have more stuff anyway. If you take for, uh, Force of Negation, then they still have Force of Vigor. If you take Fire and Ice, you still give them the Force of Vigor out. Um, goes for the Force of Negation. I think that's fine. The thing is, in this deck, Force of Vigor and Force of Negation kind of hit the same things, right? So yeah. I'd be curious to know what the logic was there if I'm missing something, which I very well might be. Um, I really like this play in particular if you have another hand disruption spell into a combo, a long term combo. Because I see that's what I'm. I say I think any all those takes were almost defensible depending on what your hand is trying to do. Yeah, that's fair. That's why I said like I'm not completely sure. Um, I'm not completely sure like what their play is there. It's pretty hard because on Carrie's hand. We've got quite a bit of just interaction, but nothing proactive. So as a result, like when when all of your stuff interacts with everything that you do, it's like what's the piece of interaction that I care about the most? And that's wholly dependent on the texture of the hand mm -hmm. on, on the model black side. Shardless Asian, pitching oh. elvish spirit god, cascade trigger, <laughs> force, uh, and then let's make it happen. The uh, 
one two off the top uh pretty good here jesus the one <laughs> that two gave a little the yeah here's yeah, a crashing footfalls them. make some rhinos would you like to look at these cards uh no i wouldn't oh there we go we did i always look even if i i just look just to pretend like i'm a better player than i am the amount of people who do not look at my doomsday deck when i flip it over is very high i'm not gonna lie i just ask how many forces? How many days? Is, I don't really care about the rest. And sometimes they'll tell me and they'll be like, there's four in that pile. Oh, there's three in that pile. Alright, thanks. No one's ever lied to me. But I have checked to see if people lie to me so that if I play them again, I know if they're lying to me or not. See, there's like two sides to that where like Shouldred's Edict, kill one of your rhinos, I had a friend at an F and M take, take my, my whole deck, deck flip, flip it, it over, over, and sort it to determine what my pile was. Yeah, yeah that's, that's too much. much. That's too much. We do see the shoulders edict, and this is what I was talking about: how the single target removal just feels so bad. Like you slow down the rhinos a little bit, but ultimately, like they still have six power on board, and you're down a card. All right, let's see. Wasteland, your Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth. Pretty good, actually. But ultimately, like, I can't imagine we're winning the Mana Denial game. This is looking pretty good for Rhinos currently. Rhinos has a clock. Rhinos has interaction. And Mono Black is sitting sitting tight with... Not sure what's in the hand currently. I'd be curious to see. Uh, Swamp, Dress. Yeah, we didn't make a play on turn three. So Wasteland... Feels like a time walk. I think we top deck this to rest. Beautiful thing here is though is through the back of a dark ritual, there could actually be a combo here. If the last cards are dark ritual, dark ritual, beseech, and uh some way to make a token. I believe this is lights out. Well that But the problem is there is <laughs> every form of interaction in the hand currently. Yeah, these hands from Marinos I always feel pretty hard to beat. Double force of vigor, force of will. When they say force check someone, do you know which force they're referring to in this case? Because I think both of them are pretty valid. Well, I know this if I'm mad, I'm assuming the card that they put into hand was another blue card for force. Yep. Draw. Oh. And the concession. Six health. Rhinos brings it home. The Botswana special. And the safari guides. Was They're taking us. What's the um, Toto is bringing us home. <laughs>